Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome back to our second and final day of Confien. At Benemerita in Centenaria Escuela Normal de Jalisco, we hope you are having a great experience. I'm pleased to present our speakers for today's opening conference, the foreign language educator going beyond the content of the curriculum. Aracelis Duffes Anedu is a senior lecturer and acting director of international cooperation at Shorewood Teachers College, Kingston, Jamaica. Her vast experience in knowledge in foreign languages education has led her to be consultant for the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information in Jamaica, as well as for different local and international institutions. She has organized and conducted international workshops on the topic of teaching methodology of English as a foreign language. She has written publications and presented a numerous workshops and conferences at the local and international arena. We also have the participation of Ramonia Smith Hamilton, who has worked as an educator at various levels of the Jamaican education system for the past 21 years. She is currently the Education Officer of Spanish in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, and a former lecturer of Spanish and English in the Department of Languages and Literatures at Church Teachers College, where she was instrumental in the development and implementation of the Diploma in Primary Spanish and the Bachelor of Education in Modern Languages programs. She has also designed and lectured English courses at the National Pedagogical University of Mexico and was consultant for the CARICOM project for the professional development of teachers for the implementation of the enhanced primary school Spanish curriculum. Her areas of research and teaching include oral communication reticence, teaching English as a second foreign language, intercultural competence, early foreign language education, and teaching foreign languages to students with special needs. Mrs. Smith Hamilton not only possesses an insatiable passion and enthusiasm for foreign languages and modern concepts and approaches to teaching and learning the Spanish language, but also for education for meaningful real life purposes for all types of learners. Please help me welcome Araceli, Aracelis Duffes Anedu and Ramonia Smith ha Hamilton. Buenos dias. Good morning, everybody. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. We are grateful to have been invited to be part of this prestigious event and that we give uh, our thanks and appreciation to all the persons, just specifying Senor Ruben Enriquez, for, make, for making this a reality for us. Hoping that the, the presentation that we are going to to present, to start, will be of interest to you. Thank you. Thank you, Araceles. I express the same sentiments. Good morning again, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here um, virtually in Mexico again. I have fond memories of Mexico in 2015 when I was there. I worked, um, I collaborated with the university, pedagogical university, with Maestra Ellen Emilson and her team. And I am very pleased to be here this morning again, collaborate again with Mexico. Um, congratulations, the team that has organized this event. And now, vamos a empezar. Yes. So Thank I am you, all of you who have um, greeted, greeted us. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Um, we can be sharing the sharing. screen. Mm -hmm. So as we, as uh, well, our topic is the foreign language educator going beyond the content of the curriculum. We are the presenters. Next slide, please. Next. The objectives of our presentation You're not seeing them, Aracelis? No. Okay. I see the first slide only. All right. Let me go again. Technology. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, we chose this topic because of the 
moments that we are living today. And that we see of the importance of going beyond the curriculum. We know that when the curriculum is given to us, we have to, okay. So when, when we go, when we are teaching, we pay attention to the curriculum. We pay attention, so we want to finish the syllabus. But as educators, we have to look beyond that. We have to look beyond the curriculum because we are not only teachers, we are educators. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing it now, Aracelis? I still see the, the, the first slide. I don't know if it is me or if others can see the current one. Señorita Alejandra, can you see the, the, the second slide? Yes, uh, we, are, we see the presentation as if you were working on it, perhaps just uh, adding it to the full presentation. Okay. I, oh. mm -hmm. I'm not sure Make it I have, I'm, I'm now in slideshow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it okay now? We can see the objective slide, but it's not mm -hmm. as a presentation. It's still as if you were working on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have it here as in slideshow mode on my screen. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's happening. Mm -hmm. I am going to. It's technology it. indeed. All right. Our apologies, colleagues. Yeah. All right, Aracelis, I'm going to ask you to see if you can share it. If you can share it. Um, let me just try one last time. All right. Get in there. Allowing it. Are you seeing anything now? Still. Okay. All right. Maestra Araceles, I'm going to ask you to share if you are able to share. Because mm. I. Unless we go ahead and we present as, as this, are you able to see the objectives now when I click on them? Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to... So, so we, will, we will still go ahead and tell you what the objectives are for today's presentation. We... Um, Maestra, Maestra Anedu, you'll mm -hmm. be sharing your screen. You're attempting to do so. I am attempting. I don't know. <laughs> okay. You can see it. Can it be seen? Can you see my, my screen? Uh, Senorita Alejandra? Estoy segura. Oh. Eh, solo puedo agregar la de. Ramonia, I don't have access to Mrs. Araceli's. Uh... Okay, so work on that, please. Please, do, do so. Okay. Okay, I have stopped sharing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mrs. Araceli's can now share. And I close it. Hold on a second. Can you, so see my screen? can you see my screen? 
Um, Mrs. Araceliz, I don't yes. have access to your screen yet. Ramonia, if if you send the presentation to Alejandra, is that possible? Okay, let me do that now. Do you have her, her email address? Or I don't know, I don't know how. Colleagues, please pardon this situation. Huh? Yes, please bear with us. Thank you, Alejandra. And thank you everyone for waiting. We will solve this in less than a minute. While we try to solve the easy colleagues, I would like to invite you to reflect on your own perceptions and definitions of what the curriculum is. What does it mean for you? And we are aware that the curriculum has a number of definitions and defining curriculum has had a lot of controversy because it means so many different things for so many different people. And so I want for you to, in a reflective exercise, reflect on your own understanding and definition of curriculum and curriculum content and what that really means for you. Yeah. Enviado Alejandra. I would like to know the profile of the persons participating in this um, conference, specifically in this one, in this presentation. Are you students? Are you teachers? What is the your, your profile, occupational profile? Okay. Citali, uh, Citlali, de la Escuela Normal de Coatepec. Muy bien. I believe we are ready to continue. Okay. Uh, you could put it on um, full screen on slideshow. <laughs> okay, so okay. while she's working, trying to uh, put it in full screen, let us go with the objectives. So our objectives are to engage participants in reflecting, as um, Senora Smith was saying, on their English language teaching practices to see to what extent they engender character education. So that is where we are heading, character education. Uh, to evaluate the merit of character education in the teaching of foreign languages. And to explore practical approaches, methodologies and strategies of integrating character education into teaching practices. Next, please. So here we have uh, a conversation between two English teachers or two teachers of English as a foreign language, um, Paul and uh, Tanya. And I would like for you to 
analyze the conversation, which spans two slides. I want for you to analyze the conversation and see to what extent do their teaching practices resemble yours? Teaching practices and their expectations of what a successful teaching episode is. So I'm going to ask Alejandra to move from this first slide, this first part of the conversation, to the second part of the conversation on the other slide in a, in a moment. All right, you can move to the other slide now. No. The previous no, one. So I would love to know, um, if you had to choose between getting Tanya's results or Paul's results, which would it be and why? And this is for reflective thought. I want for you to look at their different perspectives, look at the results that they got, look at how they were feeling and why. See if you can identify with it and tell me which one more resembles your teaching philosophy, teaching perspective and why. So I'm, I'm not sure if you're putting anything in the chat. Alejandra, you can help us. No. Okay. But in the meantime, you will realize that there is a dichotomy between their two perspectives. One is totally caught up with um, success in students' performance and students' language competence. And the other one is very, very much enamored by students' attitudes and their behaviors and how, and how they were reacting to the whole class. Which of them is you or are you both? What it is that appeals to you more? Or which of them they would like, like to be? Or which of them you would like to be and why? And do you think either is more successful do you think one is more successful than the other what's your take all right we will leave that for reflective thought we may continue i'm seeing someone saying they mm -hmm. carmen more likes the first conversation i wonder why carmen Yes, we may we may continue. Both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The woman. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, she's not attached to the curriculum, but to her students' development, performance, and transformation. Interesting perspective. Thank you, Rebecca. Muy bien. Yes. So from this, we can see. Okay, Juvia says that she thinks she's both depending on the groups and she thinks that they are both successful in their own way yes okay. excellent yes so from there we can see that the foreign language is not to be seen as a subject to be taught but as a skill to be learned by our students and that this is something that we have to keep in mind all the time we are not teaching a subject. We are teaching a skill where our students can communicate. They need to see the usefulness of what they are learning. Okay, so the next one, I don't know if they are able to see the, 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 the words well. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we see this, and uh, here we have a curriculum, foreign language learner, and a foreign language teacher. 
Can anybody please arrange the elements of the graphic? Will you add more elements? Which one or which ones? As you can see, we are trying to make this interactive because uh, working in the virtual scene, it is as if the presenter is talking alone. So, and we need the, the, to feel the warmth of the audience. So we have this graphic here with a curriculum, foreign language teacher and a foreign language learner. So would you add more, will you add more elements to it? If so, which one? Okay, Maria Fernanda, I think both groups had achieved success. I think she's referring to the previous one. Yes. I like to work with curriculum content and human qualities. Excellent, perfect. Okay, yes, that one. Curriculum refers to the set of knowledge and competencies acknowledged as available and useful. Teaching principles and techniques that will organize the design and delivery of a specific program. Excellent. So learning environment, muy bien. So we can add to that learning environment. Muy bien. Any other one? What else can we add to this? If you help your students to be better human beings, they will be able to learn anything they want in a deeper way. Excellent, Jorge Eduardo. Mm -hmm. Students' attitudes, Alejandro, perfecto. Mm -hmm. Students' motivation, excellent, excellent, excellent. Motivation, attitudes, yes. But now when we are purpose, excellent. So can we change the foreign language teacher to to what? To foreign language what? Foreign language teacher, because with what you are saying, and that if we put all of them together, we are no longer foreign language teacher, but we are foreign language educator. We are educating, we are incorporating more elements to it. And uh, that takes us to the hidden curriculum. So the hidden curriculum, we see that it is the unwritten, unofficial lessons, values, and perspectives that students learn in schools. The hidden curriculum is the unspoken or implicit academic, social, and the cultural messages that are communicated to students while they are in school. As well, it is where students absorb lessons that may or may not be part of the formal course of study, like how to interact with others, tolerance, and so on. So we see that this hidden curriculum, even though it is very important many times because we want to meet the demands of the syllabus, we neglect to work on the hidden curriculum. Then when we are educators and companions, excellent, Rebecca. Yes, so we stop working as an educator and that we are just working as teachers so we, at the end of the month, we can get our paycheck. But now, when we look at it, our, our impact on our students is geared, is motivated, has a weight on how we interact the hidden curriculum into our classes into our relationship with our students. You can put the next one, please. So we go here with definitions of curriculum, which is what uh, Senora Miss Hamilton was um, asking you before. So we are going just to pass, and then we see there are different definitions of curriculum and different approaches. So we can see that a plan, a curriculum could be a plan for achieving goals, for providing sets of learning opportunities for persons to be educated. And that this plan involves a sequence of steps 
an organized set of formal education and or training intentions. There are so many different approaches. So far, we can, we can count maybe six or more. But do we, in our practices, do we neglect or do we promote the teaching of values? Even if our institution has selected the, the approach that is the humanistic approach. Now, this is a question to you. Do we generally include the teaching and the learning of values, of attitudes to our students? Often, do we promote it? Or we are occupied trying to finish the syllabus? This is a question. What is your input? I believe we are waiting for the comments. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, I, I was inputting that I, I believe that for the most part, um, Many educators are grappled with the challenge of completing services to satisfy students' requirements for exams, to get students ready for national exams, for local exams, for regional exams. And so many times, even though values tend to be a part of a curriculum or embedded therein, those are neglected or those are not prioritized. Instead, uh, exam content is prioritized on and we move right along or language content and we're very focused on getting the students like Paul to, to speak well to speak English well to listen and to speak we are taught up with the language skills and we are not that we are not concerned with the affective aspect but that takes precedence for the most part and based on research Thank you for all that have been responding. Mm -hmm. Muy bien, muy bien. Yes, and I see Rebecca saying that um, hers is that some educators, of course, are concerned with values. Mm -hmm. That is true. And the approach should be holistic, as Eduardo says. Okay. Mm -hmm. And move on. Mm -hmm. And go to the next one. Yes, Rocio says that although she works a lot in creating integrative activities, that promotes the development of skills, she also wants to finish the curriculum until the last semester. <laughs> yes, it happens to all of us, yes. Okay, so we continue, we, you can move another one because time is moving. Yes, continue, next one. Mm -hmm. So here we says, regardless of the type of curriculum our institutions or regional organizations are inclined to, are our educational needs incorporating, incorporated, taking into account when we adhere to the norms of the curriculum? Are we giving priority to these needs? Some of you responded um, already, saying that you, you have been trying or you try and that you, you incorporate it into the, into the teaching. And some have said that um, you want at the same time to, to finish the, 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 the syllabus. But now, what important is that we give priority to these needs? What importance it has? Why should, give, give, why should we give priority to meeting these needs? The needs of, of in our classroom, the needs of our in the society. I don't, Juvia says, I don't think you have to finish the syllabus in order to reach your goals as an English educator. If we are teaching for a curriculum, then students get their needs neglected. That is what is being happening. 
Jorge Eduardo says, when we say that we finish the syllabus, we speak obviously of, <laughs> of us muy bien teachers, but what about our students? And that is, that is the issue. So, and that is why when we look into learner center and the teacher center uh, environment and, and the lessons, we see what you are saying. So Emma says, no, they don't give much importance to their real needs. And then after that, we complain that the society, that the students, that everybody, but we as educators, it is what we have to deal with. We have to work on it. So we make a change. We must represent a change. Rebecca says, I mostly neglect these needs because they are not very much concerned with our students and teachers' real needs and situations, meaning the curriculum that um, is, is, is chosen. Many times it is neglected. Hugo Arturo says inclusion plus not everyone learns in the same way. Excellent, exactly. Finding out what they need or what they are interested in makes a big difference in learners. It does, and we don't need to spend too much time to show our students that we care for them. So when we talk about our students being shy in classroom, our students not participating, our students being absent, so it goes back to us. How do we relate to our students? Do we show them that we care for them? Uh, for example, if we have uh, students that come to the classes and that they are sitting, they are not taking notes, they, apparently they are not listening, what do we do? Do we show them that we care for them or we shout out their names? and saying that what is wrong with you? Why you are not writing? Why you are not taking um, notes? So it, it is, Eduardo says, this is why the question of what is pertinent to teach has come up so much recently. Agree? Mm -hmm. What is pertinent today? We see that the societies around the world, even though they educational plans, the curricula, says that we want autonomous learners, independent learners. We want um, 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 students that is able to, to, to think critically. But are we, this is what it is said, but to what extent we as educators cater to this? Are we preparing our students? Or we are just bombarding them with activities? And then we say that our students don't like to do group work. So that is something that um, it is for us to, to, to think about it. And uh, let us get into character education. And after that, we will continue. But it is just... Um, for us to reflect, we cannot continue being passive, seeing that our society is not where it should be. Now we have more students with the bachelors. We have more, more persons who are better prepared, but concerning values and attitudes, we are not there. So we have to promote it. Yes, Emma? Administrators are not concerned with the real needs of students, nor the needs of society. They prioritize the completion of the curriculum. But we, who are the educators, we have to do something. Because that student, that male student, that I fail to instill proper values and uh, proper attitudes, tomorrow could be the father of my grandchildren. That is not what we want. We want a better society. Now, uh, Caruso says, besides a language is part of a culture and therefore every language comes with its own values. Important to be able to understand the language particularities exactly. Yes, now, uh, do we do a profile of our students? 
I know it is a lot to work on, but we need to step in and that we need to have a profile of our students. So when we have a profile of our students, our lessons will be addressed to cater to the needs of our students. So yes, we know that the curriculum and that administrators are not supporting us, but we have to do something and that we have the tools in our hands. Yes, that one says, as teachers, we can have to adapt the curriculum to our students' needs. We can tailor the syllabus to fit them. Excellent, that is what we have to do. Yes, Hugo says that I go for students' needs almost always, perfecto, which has caused administrative issues in the past. Yes, you will attract that. And not only you, believe me. But you see, these practices, when we have these practices and that we make them to be known, at some point you will see that some other teachers will emulate, will start doing our practices. And at the end, who knows, maybe the whole school will do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, Bramonia, please, with character education. Yes, yes. We are grateful for your comments, um, colleagues. So essentially, we have been talking about concepts relating to character education. And I want for us to focus on that at this point in time in our presentation. But before we can look at character education, let us define character. Let us look at what character is. And character essentially embodies, well, it is, it, it is the aggregate of features and traits that form the individual nature of a person or thing. It is individualized. One such feature or trait, characteristic of, it's a moral or ethical quality. And what I want to highlight is that it is individualized. Um, the next slide, please. Also, good character embodies the, the dispositions, the feelings and values of making good choices. And it includes the reasoning abilities and moral behavior. So all of that is subsumed under character. Therefore, character development impacts three main domains. And I want for us to consider carefully, as, as we look at these domains, I want for us to think about our individual teaching practices and our classroom situations and even our overall school or our, our college environment. Um, moral behavior is one domain, and it has to do with the way to live a good life. Um, through enactment of, of virtues such as honesty, forgiveness, uh, kindness, and respect. Um, and with these, we can flourish while behaving responsibly in, in our families and at large in our society. Also, there are perf performance virtues, which are perseverance, resourcefulness, uh, open-mindedness, and uh, determination. And these enable us to maintain healthy life habits and, and work towards personal goals and adapt, adapt to life's challenges and demands. And of course, there has there there's another domain, another domain that has to do with civic engagement and virtues such as justice, leadership, a sense of duty are all important in becoming and contributing um, in becoming lawful citizens and contributing to a democratic and thriving society and a sustainable environment. And so I want to ask you, if you could pick one character trait, which is on this slide, or you can think of one which is off, which, which is not included in these traits. If you could pick one character trait that you would want your students to leave college with, what would it be? So I want for you to, if, to, to think about it.
Erika says, character is the strength to cope with adversity and the path to autonomy. Absolutely. And I know that if you are thinking about this question critically, you would realize that you really wouldn't want just one single trait. And so it, 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 it comes back to the whole matter of the holistic approach towards education and towards value added education you'd want mm -hmm. your students to be so rounded um in values and attitudes and i'm seeing some some comments coming in the chat it's difficult to pick just one absolutely and that's the point as as as, as a teacher you'd want your student to be so rounded in a number of these the positive ones and so that brings us to the whole matter of character education, which is what we're really focusing on today. Character education. We can move on to the next slide. I see Michelle Smith says that we would hope that education will be a more holistic approach. Absolutely. And even as foreign language educators, we should not divorce ourselves from this holistic of education every discipline has a role to play and i'm using the term discipline um deliberately but essentially we do not want to dichotomize the learning process as explicit disciplines we want to look at education as a whole and we want as foreign language educators to see our role in the big picture of developing our students so what then is character education so we have a few definitions of character education and as you look at each definition colleagues i want for you to contextualize it within your within your individual um, experiences as english language educators and i want for you to take a further step and look at your your institutions and critically analyze to what extent is your institution reflecting or practicing character education? So character education teaches the habits of thought and deed that help people live and work together as families, friends, neighbors, communities, and nations. That's one definition. So we're seeing a synergy here. It is a learning process that enables students and adults in a school community to understand, care about, and act on core ethical values. So it is the thought, it is the caring about, and it is also the acting. Core values such as respect and justice, civic virtue and citizenship, responsibility for self and others, etc. And from these core values, we form the attitudes and actions that are the hallmark of safe, healthy and informed communities that serve as a foundation of our society. So where do we fit in our society? I want for us to think about the role, the individual role that we are playing within our capacities for our societies. And as we do that, let us explore some principles of character education. Now, character education has 11 essential principles. But for the purpose of this um, presentation, we have focused on five of the principles of character education. And the first principle, is where character education promotes core ethical values as the basis of good character. It promotes core ethical values as the basis of good character. So it holds, this is like the starting philosophical principle that there are widely shared and pivotally important core values like caring and honesty and fairness that form the basis of good character. And an institution committed to character education explicitly names and publicly stands for these values. 
Does your institution do that? In a school committed to developing character, these core values are defined, they are implemented, and they're embedded in the school or institution culture. And schools that effectively emphasize character development bring together all the stakeholders, um, the students, the lecturers, the administration, the school, the school or institution community, and they agree on specific character strengths that will serve as the school's core values. Um, some of these values, they, when you put them together, they serve towards one common good. And they meet the classical tests of reversibility. Would you want to be treated this way? And universality, would you want all persons to act this way and in a, if, if in a similar situation? The second principle, the school now defines character comprehensively to include thinking, feelings, and actions. And when we look at feelings, we are right away thinking of the affective. It focuses on how an institution helps the students to understand, to care about, and to consistently practice the core values that will enable them to flourish in school relationships, in the workplace, and as citizens. That's the second principle. And if and students are provided with different opportunities to study, to discuss each core value, to connect their social and emotional skills to the patterns of behaviors associated with each core value. And ultimately, ultimately internalize and express in their own words what they want. This is so learner-centered, what they want to consistently practice um, these, why they want to consistently practice these character strengths. So it is individualized. And see Rocio, just like a mission and a vision statement. And principle three talks about um, effective character education, including a meaningful and challenging academic curriculum that respects all learners and helps them succeed. So we're looking at inclusivity. We're looking at school leaders who support and encourage teachers as they strive to differentiate instructions employing a variety of active teaching and learning strategies and look for ways to integrate the shared values of the school into everyday teaching. And teachers integrate social and emotional learning into their classrooms. So the skills and competences of uh, self-awareness, self-management, and, and ethical decision-making, all of those are taken into account. The fourth principle has to do with um, character education being strived towards to develop students' intrinsic motivation. The school fosters self-motivation. And yesterday's first presentation focused a lot on intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic motivation. Um, it, 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 is, it emphasizes intrinsic over extrinsic. Students are motivated to do the right thing. Why? Because it is the right thing to do. Um, not because you're going to get a re reward. Providing opportunities for students to learn from their mistakes, to learn from their mistakes and not punished for their mistakes, but to learn from their mistakes in ways that align with the core values of the school, those that the school would have selected to focus on and address specific areas of character growth. So, so within our context in Jamaica, for example, our Ministry of Education focuses on form time empowerment sessions. That's a time of the day when form teachers or teachers who are assigned to specific grades for the academic year, they meet with their students. They, they, they have talks with them, they check in on them. And we call them empowerment sessions because they are meant to motivate the students. This is where the students can just breathe 
and be themselves and express themselves this is where they can they can receive from themselves and also from their their teacher and be motivated and also we see it in our learning plan and of course co-curricular activities and principle five looks at the school's character initiative um the, it, 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 the, the school's character initiative has shared leadership and long range support for continuous improvement. So here's where school leaders, um, for character education to meet the criteria, there must be leaders, a principal, another administrator, a lead teacher who champion the effort and at least initially a character education committee or several support groups with responsibility for planning, long range planning and implementation. Over time, the functions of this committee may be taken on by the school's regular governing bodies, but there's this committee in place for character development. And those are our five principles. And so as we consider these five principles, we can look at the different life skills that character education promotes. And I'm wondering, just, just reflecting, as I'd asked you to do before, which of the five principles does your institution promote? So here are a few um, character education life skills. And these are real life skills. And do we promote these in our teaching of foreign languages and how? We're looking at decision-making, coping with stress, a real life skill, especially now during our context, coping with emotions. Uh, to what extent do we promote emotional intelligence among our students? Do we facilitate that? How so? Assertiveness, um, conflict resolution, and all of those life skills. And if we move on to the other slide, we can also see um core values so these are the values now that your institution and in some cases we if it is not institutionally based then we within our capacity as the foreign language educator we have to engender that in our in our classes among our students here are some values and virtues that are embedded in character education and we see discipline we see our respect and tolerance we see trustworthiness, fairness, responsibility, empathy, community spirit, refusal. Refusal has to do with a number of things. Refusal has to do with knowing how to say no and when to say no for the purpose of self-preservation, for the purpose of maintaining your core values. And of course, character education, some of us, we would earlier have highlighted some challenges that we're having. Here are some other challenges, um, some gaps, existing gaps for implementing uh, character education. Curriculum perspective and mindsets. Um, curriculum is limited to formal or planned teaching units, and that's it. And curriculum implementation too focuses primarily, primarily of teaching subjects with emphasis on cognition rather than on change. And typical assessment practices downplay the affective domain. To what extent is the affective domain assessed? And of course, the need for buy-in from teachers and administrators on the importance of catering to the psychosocial development of the child and not just the cognitive. And Michelle is saying that students must see curriculum as not just being, not just learning a discipline, but as related to real life, essentially it is. And not just the students, but the educator in building character. Okay, let us continue. Therefore, to create a school culture where the teaching of values and expected behaviors is at the forefront, schools must make a paradigm shift from disciplining to coaching. 
and mentoring where all members of the school community and the college community, the university community, accept the responsibility to practice and model the core values of good character and guide and support each other in practicing these positive behaviors. I believe that one of the most fundamental aspects of teaching character or, or, or emitting good character is modeling. And as teacher educators, to what extent do we model the values and the ethics and the attitudes that we want to engender in our students, in our student teachers who by extension will engender that in their students. That is food for thought. Seguimos. And also, if we want to implement character education on a school and the classroom level, we can consider some of these. We can focus on it as an institution-wide initiative and we will win if that is the case. Imagine if a whole institution would focus on this. And so we would have common planning time where our, our lecturers were all geared at focusing on accomplishing the same values across the same disciplines or experiences that our students will have. And so everything is focused on that. And so we are, there, there is synergy, there is connectivity with all the learning experiences that our students are having should ultimately build on these values. Um, one that allocates time and resources for training and planning for faculty, yes, as I had just said, to develop an integrated character education plan. And of course, extends into extracurricular or co-curricular activities and events. Another thing that we can do is that we can choose one character trait to focus on. We can incorporate this each week, each month. We can incorporate that character trait into lessons um, in, in, our, in our classroom activities. And we can also partner with other teachers to promote grade level or institution wide collaboration. And also include this weekly or monthly character trait in school functions and school operations. And so, as we can see, as we focus on the five principles and all that character education embodies, we realize that the, if the affective is embedded in all of these principles, especially in principle number two, where the institution defines character comprehensively to include thinking and feelings and actions. And so, Araceli's is going to elaborate some more on, on this aspect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you. Okay, so you can put the next uh, slide. Because here it is, as Ramonia has said, where affective domain comes in. What can we do? We cannot continue saying that our schools, our administrations, we do have a play to roll a role to play. So we have to do something and it starts with us. And the modeling component is very important because it is not do as I said and not as I do. We have to be models, role models to our students. So looking at the affective domain, the levels of the affective domain, we are going to work on all of them. The first one is receiving. So we have to start working from the bottom one because we will be building up on the character of our students. And again, I go with the profile of your students. It is very important that at the beginning of the academic year, we, after observing our students, we write the profile of our students and that we keep on updating that profile and that working on it because we will be molding them. We are just now teaching the English as a foreign language, but at the same time, forming their character. So based on the population that we have, it will be, that will be our, our emphasis. 
because we cannot be using the objectives for the affective domain that somebody else uses. We have to concentrate and think, do the research, and see my students in this specific group, what are their needs? What are the problems they are having? And that based on that, now we are going to look at the different levels forming or building them, their character. So the bottom one, meaning the lower order, is receiving. Receiving is important. Some persons will say, no, 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 we have to pay attention to the higher level. But we have students that are not ready to receive the foreign language. We have students who do not like the foreign language. And as it was discussed yesterday, there are some students who are not motivated. So we have to start from there, working with our students so they will be aware or willing to learn or listen about the foreign language, whether it is English, as it is our case, Spanish, Russian, you name it. We have to develop in them the desire to be part of the classroom. Once they have this desire, it is we see how they will be motivated to respond. But what we do, we want our students to respond without working on their motivation. So we have to start from the bottom, which is receiving. So if we have students who, have, um, who are going through uh, a difficult uh, moment and they do not appreciate the classes and so on, so we have to start planning objectives in order to, to, to work on the receiving component or receiving aspect of the affective domain. The second one is responding. So it is not only to sit there in a passive way. So that is the first one. Now that we have incorporated them, we have managed to capture their interest. Now we have to give them activities so we see how they respond and by participating in our classes. If there are uh, group works, so for them to participate. So we have to work on this. We are training our students. So it is not just saying that they are not. Yes, they are not because they have not been taught that value, that attitude. Going up, we have valuing. Here, our students accept and or recognize the value of the event or of the, the lesson or, 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 or of the conflict, a situation, and uh, by participating more. Not only participating, but participating and uh, valuing participating and explaining why this should be like this or not. One example has to do with our students working in groups or respecting their turn. I don't know for the Mexican population, but it is difficult in other, other countries, in other places, uh, to keep students um, controlled. The classroom management is an issue. So even when the teacher is talking, is explaining something or giving instructions, we will see students who are talking at the same time. And uh, it happens with um, students. It happens when the, the, the teacher is talking, when students are talking. And if they have to work in a group or just um, a dialogue to persons, they may not listen to the other person. So here we come, when we observe this trait, when we observe this behavior, we have to tackle it, we have to work on it until we see results. So after valuing, we have organizing, it's very important. So here when they are organizing, we are developing in them the capacity to assimilate 
to internalize. So it is something that is embedded in their brain. So it is not only that this is what should be done, but it is in the process of internalizing it for the proper outcome that will be when they are performing. So they are internalizing it because after they have valued it, now they start making connections in the brain and they start organizing their behavior. So they are able to compare, they are able to give priorities and they are able to adopt another organized behavior. And then the highest one up to now is characterizing. So here, characterizing, it takes us to character. So here, our students fully integrate the process by participating in the new event in a constant form. So it is not, you, you, you do not have even to ask them to participate. They will participate spontaneously. So here is where we want to get building character. So if we manage to get this, to achieve this with our students, when these, our students are out there in the society, believe me, we will have a better society. Next slide, please. Okay, so here, um, it is, let us say, kind of um, comparing the three uh, domains um, according to, to the revised Bloom's taxonomy and uh, the other one. So we have the cognitive domain, affective domain, and the psychomotor domain. So the affective domain, as important as it is, is very often the neglected one. So more is given to the cognitive domain and to the psychomotor domain. The affective one, the one that has to do with the beliefs, with the thinking, with the, 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 the attitudes, that one is neglected. So we see that at the bottom, for the, for the cognitive domain, we see that we pay more attention to the application part of it, application level. And uh, here it is put oh, that valuing is very important. But as I said, we have to start from the receiving going up. We have to make a change in how our students perceive the foreign language. Once they get that perception, where they see the foreign language, not just as a subject, as I said before, but as a skill that they can use to communicate with others. We see that their attitude, their response will be different. They will be in a proper mode of receiving the contents that are coming. So they will not be compartmentalizing the, the content, they will receive it and they will look with attention, trying to be part and to respond. Okay, next, please. Okay, so here we see the learning outcomes, thanks, using the affective domain. This is for us to interact. So let us give an example. So for the receiving, let us say that we choose the learning outcome of listen to others with respect. We can work on this on any, 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 for any group. We could have some students in our group who they, as I said before, they do not respect others. And this is not only at the primary level, we will see it at the primary, secondary, and at times at the tertiary level. And so this even brings us closer to bullying. So why bullying takes place? If every teacher, if every educator attacks this, we will not have it. But we do not, for whatever reason, we do not. 
So we have, it is our call to work on it. So if we give this um, um, learner learning outcome, listen to others with respect. So at the end of it, the response from our students will be just to be able to describe, be able to choose, to identify, to name, any. But um, at times our students are not participating in class because they did not hear, they did not listen to what others were saying. So once we work on this, we will see that our students will be responding. So now we move on to the responding level. So here we are looking for their willingness to respond. We are looking at their satisfaction in responding. So it is not that they are going to respond because you ask them a question, but we will see here the motivation. So even when you are teaching, they want to participate. And that if we are using the, the five E's model of uh, learning, we will see that, are you familiar with the five E's? Uh, with the five E's model of learning, that is what uh, we are using currently in, in Jamaica. So the five E is engagement. The second E is elaboration. So uh, the third E is explaining. The fourth one is, no, elaboration is the, the first one is engagement. The, the second one is exploration, sorry. The third one, explaining. The fourth, elaboration. That is when they are just, they start practicing it. And the fifth one is evaluation. So if we manage to motivate them, we will see them responding from the first E, which is the engagement. So valuing, as I said, it is for them to complete. They, they have to analyze what they are giving and they have to think of a value of it. In this case, it could be for them to propose a plan to solve a problem. So they will be able to propose a plan because they have gone through an issue. They have even explained it and they have studied it. Now we move to the fourth uh, level, which is organization. Very important, all of them are important. Here they will have to adhere, they may even be able to alter, to arrange, to combine, to compare, to organize. So our students will be accepting responsibility for their behavior, and they will be accepting ethical standards and that giving priority to the time because they have to meet the needs of the group. So if they are doing a group work, it is not just that they are going to, to maybe at the end or take their time. No, they know that they have a time to submit the project. So as they are organized, they will cooperate, they will collaborate and submit their parts on time. And that the last one is characterization. Here they will act, they will display, they will modify, they will perform, they will practice. So here it is not show, oh, it is show, sorry, show self-reliance when working independently. So we are working, we are talking about um, autonomous learners and that we complain that some students are not independent learners, but have they been taught to be independent learners? Many times, no. They are just given the assignments to do but many times we do not take them through. And this is a process, not the cognitive one, but the affective one. Next, please. So when we are writing the affective objectives, we have to look at these aspects. The first one, we have to determine the underlying values or attitudes integrated in the lesson. What are our problems? And remember, this will be given to us 
by the profile that we will do, not the profile that the college or the school or the university has, the profile that we as educators have written in of our students. So we have to look at the values and the needs of our students. Second, we have to choose the level of difficulty in the affective domain, along with the appropriate behavior, behavioral verbs. So we have to see where are they? What is their problem? What is their situation? So should I start from the bottom going up or I should start by valuing? It, it is given to us depending or based on the profile again of our students. Three, support the affective behavioral verb with an observable activity that is grounded on deepening of the values, not the main topic of the lesson plan. If we can combine them, perfect. If not, we have always to create or give them an activity that will make them to work on the specific situation at hand. Fourth, when we are writing our objectives, we must observe the ABCD and the criteria SMART. Because uh, when teaching, we see that our, our teachers, they write the objectives and that it is if they are teaching three grade uh, eight classrooms and that they are going, they will write the same lesson plan, the same objectives. And it cannot be done like that because each group has their peculiarity. So when we observe the ABCD, A is the audience. B is the behavior. Now the behavior could be the cognitive behavior or could be the affective or the psychomotor behavior. So when writing objectives, you see mostly represented the cognitive and the psychomotor. Now the um, affective behavior is absent. And that we must follow the criteria SMART. Which one is the criteria, the SMART criteria? What is it? It says S goes for S, S goes for specific, M goes for measurable, something that we can see their behavior and the achievable, attainable. So we are not asking something in the first class, in the first lesson, that we know that they will not be able to achieve, to attain. They are to be relevant, that is the R, they are to be relevant to the situation at hand, and they are to be time bound. Next one, if we have questions, we can work more on this. Next one. Mm -hmm. So here we are, tailoring our general objectives because time is 118 and that we are running out of time. So tailoring our general objectives. So the general objectives, that is an example of your English language program or classes may enable students to see the value of speaking a foreign language and provide them with the means to do so. It could be to enjoy the experience of learning English through interactive teaching learning methods and procedures that fulfill the purpose of integration. These are the general objectives. Increase their knowledge and appreciation of the culture of English speaking people. Yesterday I, I heard, uh, I saw uh, a question where somebody was saying that students may not want to use the language uh, English so as not to as not to um, undervalue as not to 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 es traicionar ahora no recuerdo la palabra traicionar uh, traicionar uh, Mexico. Now it goes because of the historical background, what is going between Mexico and uh, the neighbor country 
that is uh, English speaking. Betray. Gracias, Eduardo. Gracias. Yes, uh, to betray. So if it is so, we have to teach our students. We have to educate them because English is not only sp sp uh, spoken in, in, in America. Degree. ABCD stands for Audience Behavior Crit um, Condition and Degree, not Criteria, Condition and Degree. So the English language is a, a universal language. And uh, it is not that we are betraying our country. It is that we are being skillful in order for tomorrow to better represent our culture. So it, it depends on how we put it to our students, but we have to teach them, we cannot just uh, ignore it. And another one is socialize and cooperate with each other. This is something I don't know if that happens in Mexico, but in some other countries, um, it, it happens a lot, where there is a sense of competition and um, competitiveness, and students may not want to cooperate or to collaborate with another one because they want to get a better result. Next one. Next slide. Mm -hmm. So yes, another more more general objectives. Pay attention to this because we are going to do an activity. So we have to develop a positive attitudes to the English language as a medium of communication in real life situations. So we have to develop uh, specific objectives that will cater to this general objectives, uh, objective and the, the appropriate activities that will make our students to really be competent or be, um, um, be ready to attain our um, objectives. So we are to facilitate cross-cultural understanding the intercultural skill and intercultural competence through sensitivity to diverse cultures. So here we are developing in them the tolerance and accepting others. It doesn't matter that the person does not look like us, but they are to accept others because we are developing the, the citizen of the future. Yes, um, and then Values, develop values such as respect for others, self-control, and responsible behavior as responsible citizens. Next one, please. Mm -hmm. So here we are tailoring our general, one general objective to specific one. So we took one of the general objectives, thank you, that we had in the previous slide, and it says to develop values such as respect for others, self-control, and responsible citizenship. So our specific objective could be, because we know that in our group, we have students who are from different uh, social levels or from different environments, um, students that are, they are not at the same level. So we have to teach them to appreciate. It is not only just by telling them you have to, but by giving them activities where they have to work together. So an example of our specific objective, and uh, I did not put this in the ABCDs because that was going to take us to another part, another, another strand. So work collaboratively in groups of four to create a brochure. Now, the brochure could be, let us say, that we are teaching culture and that we are teaching about uh, different um, places in Mexico. So we want, we, we give each of our group, we give them a region or an area to, to, to write about. So because we don't want everybody to be doing the same activity. So they have to work collaboratively in groups of fours to create a brochure and then we specify in what. Next. Now we have here the objective, the specific objective, which is again, work collaboratively in groups of fours to create a brochure and then it continues. And the activity could be 
to create a brochure to promote the tourist attractions in Chiapas. So one group will be giving uh, a, a, um, a region or a district and another group, another one. So they have to work together. And uh, when we are using this, we are looking at how they relate to each other. So that's, we will see those students who are passive, we will see them being part of, of, of the process. Another one, please. Okay, so, um, no, go to the, to the other one, go to the previous one. Previous, yes. So, would you like to choose a general objective uh, from the ones that you have or from the ones that we have shown here? And that creates uh, an, a specific objective, taking into account the the affective domain. I Will we go we do back not to the slide with the, if we just take a minute and go back to the slide with the general objectives? And these general objectives, you'd realize they're all affective objectives, mm -hmm. so you can. If, if you're not if you've not done so before within your language program you could use this as a guide to form your own set of general affective objectives these were adapted from our national standards curriculum for spanish to suit the english language context All right. And okay. Yeah, because um, it is one twenty-six, and uh, we are yes, so to, to we have to finish soon. Uh, it's a pity because we we wanted um, this practical part um, to be to be done where we live. But um, with well, while they think about it, Aracelis, we could we could share with them some additional activities. Okay. Um. And who knows, maybe somebody is thinking of one of these. Let's see. Alejandra, if you could go to slide 43, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so here, is, here are some ways in which we can engender the affective in English language teaching and learning. So these are, these are just some practical suggestions. Some of them were adapted from Mentoring Minds which is a, a site, and some of them were, were are original, they were added. Um, so there is Blog It, where each student writes a blog post, and you'll realize that these activities bring out the skills. So we see how we can still get both, the emotional and the intellectual. Um, we can get the cognitive, we can get the psychomotor, and we can get the uh, um, effective, all wrapped up and still promote values and character education, still promoting our language skills. So here's Blog It, where each student can write a blog post that uses his or her own words to define and describe the character trait uh, um, or value and explains how the value or character trait can be demonstrated. And blog posts can be um, uploaded online on a, a teacher created blog or on paper as part of a wall mural in the classroom. Well, not in our context today. Some of us are not back to face to face. Um, we could also express them on a, a Padlet or Jamboard or any other appropriate online tool. Then we also have Affirm It. And I love this one. This could be a writing task or a speaking task. And this has to do with affirmation. So here it is that we can build the vocabulary of our students looking at adjectives. And at the same time, we can, we can empower them. Um, so they can, this can be presented by a blog or even a vlog or Padlet or any form of written pub, pub, publishing. And also it can be done as a speaking task. It could be done as a poem or oration or music via any form of musical composition, each student shares affirmations of character traits that he or she wants to develop or improve on within him or herself. So the students can develop, they can write affirmations such as, you know what, I am fearfully made, 
I am respectful, I am resilient, I am compassionate. Um, and this can be like a follow-up activity also of a video or a story depicting an admirable or an iconic protagonist. And uh, the next next slide, please. Be before you go there, we see oh, where sorry. Eduardo has um, given us um, um, an activity, no, or, or a, a comment. It says yes. that the objective of this brochure is that students recognize the responsibility that the visitor, and not only a visitor, the visitor and the, the, the persons from that place, they must show when visiting their natural resources or if it is in their place, the, the, their behavior, what is expected of them. Yes. So for even for them to consider, to value their culture. So it is not that the culture that they see in, in the movies is better than their culture. Excellent yes. for the objective yes. guideline three. Thank you. Yes. And, and it, it really promotes good citizenship as well. It's a part of that. Um, uh, we, oh, can we look at the other activities? Um, there is also just tweeted or just gram it where each student can compose a character tweet or an Instagram post of 140 characters or thereabout with advice on how to exhibit the character trait in and outside of class. Tweets or posts may be, may be uploaded digitally with teacher discretion, of course, as part of a slideshow to display in class or even as sticky notes posted on the classroom door or sticky notes posted at home on the mirrors of the students. So every time they go there, they can see that affirmation. They can see that value that they want to promote in themselves. And um, there is also live action demos where students can work with partners or in small groups to create live action demonstrations of the character trait that they want to emulate or the character trait being promoted at that time in the week or in the month. And they can present their demonstrations to the class. And, uh, oh yes. They can also create an acrostic, which is a piece of writing in which, in which a particular set of letters, typically the first letter of each line or word or paragraph, um, they can spell out a word or phrase with, spe with special significance to the text. Um, and they can use, they can create acrostics of the value that they want to promote. So they can also, um, create posters or digital displays of their acrostics, and these may be displayed and presented in the classroom or around the school, portraying the character trait or value from a word or phrase that relates to or demonstrates the character trait. And they can do mini docu-series where they work in small groups, create um, five minute mini documentaries that are educational in nature to teach the meaning of and the importance of the character trait or the value um, that is being promoted. These can be recorded or presented in, in person or in front of a class. And the two final, well, almost there. Oh, taboo. Taboo is, can be very educational and enjoyable with um, promoting character education and the effective. Students can describe they, if you know how the taboo game is played, students can describe the character trait without saying the taboo word, which would be the character trait, taboo in quote. And teammates can use the clues to guess the character trait or the value. There is imagine if, where students work in small groups to brainstorm an imaginary chain reaction scenario about what could happen if everyone exhibited or did not exhibit a particular value or a character trait. This can get very interesting. Groups can share their ideas with the class and it, you can follow up with debates and so on. And finally, on our last, on our penultimate slide, we have a digizine or a digimagazine or an e-zine. Um, as a class, the students can start a school e-zine or web page for a chosen character trait with its description and importance and tips 
on demonstrating that particular value or trait in everyday life. It can be a web page which may be continued and built upon as we progress with other values and other characters, character traits. And I'm going to hand over to my dear colleague, Aracelis, to close us off. Okay, so as we, we, we would like to talk more, but well, we are even past uh, five minutes of our, um, what was given to us. Emma Contreras says, these activities are great to start promoting consciousness about principles, but we still need to provide experiences where they can live and act the values, not Absolutely. just affirmations. And Absolutely. that is what I said, yes, it, now for that one, these are the activities that you should create so and you will implement in the classroom and uh when we pass the COVID 19 um period we can take our students out to see how they behave so we will incorporate our our affective um objectives the affective domain uh into the the, 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 the use, even you can have um, them with a pen pal from another institution or from another country, but always you will be monitoring them and always teaching them. There is a lot that we can do. There is a lot. And uh, it is uh, the time for us to step in. And as Albert Stein says or said, Weakness of attitude becomes weakness of character. So if we are not capitalizing, if we are not working in our, on our attitudes, at the end, what type of character do we have? We have somebody that any person can come and step on us because our attitude shows that we do not have a character. So as educators, please let us remember what Albert Stein said. Weakness of attitude becomes in the future, in the society that is to come, weakness of character, where anybody can come and uh, just abuse us. And uh, the, the next one, the next, um, that is there, please, just a second, just a second one, the, 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 the last one. It says, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. So we are teaching them the foreign language, but at the same time, we are educating our students. Thank you. Thank you, Aracelis Ramonia, for your valuable insights in character education. And thank you for bearing with us through our technological difficulties. In the name of everyone who attended here today and the Benemerita and Centenaria Escuela Normal de Jalisco, we'd like to present you with the following certification of participation. And it's, um, oh my God. Let me, my technical difficulties again. Here we go. <laughs> De Benemérita y Centenaria Escuela Normal de Jalisco otorga la presente constancia a Aracelis Duffes Anedu por su valiosa contribución como ponente de la conferencia magistral de Foreign Language Educator Going Beyond the Content of the Curriculum en el marco del Congreso Nacional de Formadores C en Escuelas Normales 2021. De Benemérita y Centenaria Escuela Normal de Jalisco otorga la presente constancia a Ramón Smith Hamilton por su valiosa contribución como ponente de la conferencia magistral The Foreign Language Educator Going Beyond the Content of the Curriculum en el marco del Congreso Nacional de Formadores C en Escuelas Normales. Thank you so much for your valuable participation Thank and you. everyone enjoyed and we are, we are still getting the comments here. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to us. And thank, thank you for you. your thank participation. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm.